If you are sick of spending money on Google Ads and not getting enough conversions, maybe even not getting any conversions, then this is the video for you. Because I'm going to show you how to work out what the problem is and most importantly, how to fix it. So I've been running Google Ads for more than 15 years, spent more than $12 million on the Google Ad platform. And I see many ad accounts that are in this scenario, right? Where they're just not generating enough conversions, maybe not even any conversions. And in that situation, the most important thing to do is to identify the problem. Because if we can identify the problem, then we can fix it. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna walk through potential problems that might be causing this issue. And then I'll go through and explain the fixes for each of those and show you how to work out if that problem is actually affecting, affecting you or not. So as we go through, you can go, okay, not that problem, that's not affecting me, not that problem, that's not affecting me. Yes, this one is, okay, this is the fix, fantastic. I can go ahead and, and implement that and get a lot more conversions. And hopefully this video will be very valuable because of that. So the first thing we need to do here is actually identify, is this a Google Ads problem or is it not? Because it's very easy when you're running Google Ads, you're paying Google uh, for traffic to see a drop off in conversions or not enough conversions and just think, oh, it's obviously a Google Ads problem. Uh, this is really annoying and you don't necessarily look into the other potential causes, but it's really important to do that because if you think it's a Google Ads problem, but it's not, it doesn't matter what you do to your Google Ads, it's not gonna fix the situation. It's not going to improve the number of conversions that you're getting. So the way we do that is we compare our Google Ads data to other traffic sources. Now, if you're a brand new business and you're only running Google Ads as a way of generating leads, customers, etc., you're not going to be able to do this because you're not gonna have any other traffic sources, but most businesses will be able to do this. So take a look at your Google Ads data and compare it to your organic traffic, if you've got organic traffic, or compare it to social media traffic, either paid or organic, again, if you've got those. Compare it to email marketing. Have a look at various other ways that you might acquire customers. And if, for example, you've seen a big drop off in your Google Ad results, your, your conversions you're getting from there, are you also seeing a big drop off in conversions from organic traffic, from social, from email? Because if you're getting a big drop off across the board or you're not converting as well across the board, it's probably not a Google Ads issue. It's probably something else. And there's a number of different things it could be. I'll quickly run through um, some examples. So it could be an issue with your website. Perhaps there's a technical issue that's not allowing people to purchase or fill out the lead form. These things sound very basic, but they happen more often than you think. Or maybe there's been website changes made and you think the new website looks great and it's designed really nicely, but it's not converting as well. That again happens more often and then you think. Perhaps there's an issue with your offer. Maybe there are superior offers out there in the market. People either don't want what you're selling or they do want it, but perhaps you're mispriced. There are other competitors that are selling it for, for a better price. These things would affect your conversions across the board, and that would be an indication, you know, if you're seeing issues across the board, that it wouldn't be a Google Ads thing. It could be, could be like I said, offer website pricing. Could be a changing competitive landscape. Could be that a new competitor has just brought out a new product, and that's far superior. And that's affected not only you, but your other competitors within the space. So if you see a drop off across the board, it might be something to, to think about and have a little look at what are our competitors doing? Oh yeah, they've just bought out the model 3000, whatever. Yeah, that is better than anything we've got. We're going to have to do something about that. That could be a big issue as well. And then of course, there's seasonality. Most businesses are seasonal, some highly seasonal, some less so, but most businesses are going to experience some parts of the year that are really good, where you get really good conversions and other parts of the year where you struggle. If, for example, you're trying to sell weight loss in the US in December, it's gonna be really difficult to sell at that time of the year in comparison to if you're trying to sell it in January, whether that's a service or you know, a coaching program or, or a supplement or a gym membership, whatever it happens to be, that the seasonality of the time of year is gonna make a massive difference. And again, if it is seasonality that's affecting your conversions, that wouldn't just affect your Google ads, that would be affected across the board in terms of, of other channels. Okay, so assuming you are fairly confident that it is your Google Ads that's the problem, you've had a look at your data and you don't think it's a, it's a wider issue that might require a different fix, we can then look at various metrics within your Google Ad account to try and identify what within that is the problem there, what we can improve, what we can fix, and, and how we can get a lot more conversions. So whenever you've got an issue like this, I like to bring things back to basics to start with, okay? And one of the core metrics, one of the most important things with Google Ads always has been, likely always will be, is CTR, click-through rate. Are your ads engaging enough for people to actually be clicking on them? Are they written in a way that makes people feel like, oh, that's interesting. Yes, that product, service, etc., is likely to solve my problem. Therefore, I'm going to click, I'm going to come through. Because if people aren't doing that, if they're not clicking in a high enough percentage, not coming through to your website, you're not going to get conversions. That's the sort of a basic principle of Google Ads, especially when it comes to, to the search network. 
So with search campaigns, I really would like to see a click-through rate of 8% or above. And if you've got a click-through rate beneath that, there's probably room for improvement. Later on, I'm gonna talk more about how to write a better ad copy to improve your, your click-through rate. But think about it, if you've got a click-through rate currently of 5% and you can take that up to 10%, that's gonna make an enormous difference in terms of the amount of people coming through to your website, um, how many conversions you're likely to get, and how successful and profitable your Google Ad campaigns are. So that's the first thing to look at is click-through rate. The next thing to take a look at is impression share metrics and specifically your top impression share. So to do that, I'm just gonna jump into one of our Google Ad accounts. I've got a uh, an ad group here lined up that I wanna just walk you through some of the data and how we actually go about taking a look at this and I'll explain why there could be potential issues here and how you go about um, fixing it, okay? So here we, I've just highlighted one of the ad groups and I've got sort of standard Google Ads data. But what I wanna look at is impression share. I wanna look at top impression share and actually want to look at absolute top impression share I'm gonna show you how to do that and then and explain what that means here. So you can take your ad group, campaign, etc. We're gonna go into columns here. We're gonna go ahead and click modify columns. And then just up here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some metrics. So I want search impression share, just like I, I described. Let's add that in. I also want search top impression share. And if I click back in here, I also want search absolute top impression share, okay? And we can see here, those have been added in, those three metrics just there and our columns, and I'm gonna go ahead and click apply, and then we can take a look at this, okay? And I can explain each one, right? So we've got search impression share. So that is simply of the searches on Google that my ads could have shown for, because people were searching for, you know, keywords that are related to the ones that I'm, I'm targeting. What percentage of the time did my ads actually appear? Okay, so we've got 90, just under 95%. So 95% of the time when ads could have been shown to searches, they were. That's really good, that's a nice high search impression share. Now these next two metrics are the actually important part around this point, identifying this potential issue. We've got search top impression share. So that is the percentage of the time where our ads appeared at the top of the page. Not necessarily position number one, but at the top of the page when it comes to the ad results when someone's searching. So what you want is your search top impression share to be close to your search impression share. Because if, for example, you're getting a 95% search impression share, so 95% of the time that your ads could be shown, they are shown, but your search top impression share is, say, 30%, that means that when your ads are shown, only around a third of the time are they actually at the top of those page in those top ad results. That's not good. That means they're gonna be lower down at far more often, and that's gonna impact your conversion rate. I'll explain more about that in a second. And then we've got search absolute top impression share, which is how often are our ads appearing in the absolute top position. And again, you want that to be not too far off your search top impression share and your search impression share metric. So here we've got, you know, 90, just under 95%, 92%, and then just under 92%. So basically within this ad group, the ads are appearing in position one the vast majority of the time. If your search absolute top impression share is... 10%, 20%, 30% lower than your search top impression share, that's fine. I, I'm, not, I'm not super concerned about it. You don't always need to be right absolutely at the top, but it's interesting to have that metric. The, the, the more important thing is this, this search top impression share is close to your search impression share. Now, the reason why this is so important, this is how we have a look at whether or not we're showing up at the top of the page when it comes to ad results. It's because you can still get clicks from being lower down, being on the second page, etc. But the people that make it that far, these are the ones that are far less likely to convert because they've probably already clicked on the options at the top of the page, haven't found quite what they're looking for. They're clicking around, they're really considering their options. Maybe they've searched for something that's actually not quite the right search for what they're looking for and that's why they've had a bunch of ads or organic results appear and they've clicked on those and gone, oh, no, this isn't quite right and they've come back out you don't really want those people clicking on your ads. They're, they're far less likely to convert. What you want is to be right at the top. Someone, someone searches for something, your ad appears because it's relevant to their search. They click and they're far more likely to go through and convert. You don't necessarily want the people that are doing all the research and comparing all the options and they've clicked on all the other ones and maybe a bit confused about what they want. Um, so that's really important. So if you do see that your search top impression share is significantly lower than your search impression share, showing that yes, your ads are being shown, but they're often not at the top of the page, there are a few different ways you can go about fixing that. We've already discussed improving your ads, which will improve your quality score, and that will help Google raise your rank on the page. But also, depending on your bidding strategy, you might just not be spending enough to appear at the top of the page, which is obviously 
something you can change. And bidding strategies are actually really, really important. I cover them in detail in a whole other video. I'll include a link in the description below because you want to go ahead and, and check that out if you are seeing this issue in particular that your top impression share is not as high as it needs to be. It's not close to that search impression share. Then go ahead and check out bidding strategies because you might be able to change your bidding strategy and that problem will take care um, of itself and you'll appear higher up in those ad results and get better results because of it. Okay, so once you've been through those two things, there are some more potential problems and things we need to run through in terms of diagnosing the issue and, and potential fixes. Before we do that, I want to quickly let you know about our done for you Google Ads services. Now, if you're going through this and thinking this is really complicated, I just want to get conversions from my Google Ad campaigns. I don't have to worry about this. My company can do that for you. We can literally, we can create your campaigns, manage them, optimize them, scale them, get you the best results possible, almost certainly get you better results than if you do it yourself and we'll take all that workload off your hands. So if that sounds like a good deal, you can click on the link in the description below. That'll take you to a page on our website where you can book in a free, no obligation call with one of my team members to find out more how we might be able to help. They'll be able to show you the results we've been able to get for uh, lots and lots of other clients, potentially some in your industry as well. So yeah, if that sounds good, go ahead and do that and hopefully we get a chance to work together. Okay, so let's carry on with diagnosing the issue and then uh, providing the solution depending on, on what we find. So let's assume that at this point your CTR is above 8%, so we think your ad copy is decent, and you're getting good top impression share, so you haven't got a misaligned bidding strategy or something like that. That's optimized and, and doing what you need it to do. You're appearing nice and high on the page, but you're still not getting many conversions, potentially any conversions. Then we need to look at some other things, okay? So the first thing I'd look at after that would be the landing page. Now remember, at this stage, we've already established that Google Ads is the problem, as in other channels are converting um, if you have them. And if there's a scenario where you're using the same landing page for other traffic sources as you are for Google Ads, and it's converting for those other traffic sources, but not for your Google Ads, which so does sometimes happen, then the solution there would be to create a specific landing page for your Google Ad campaigns. Because it might be that what you put on your Google Ad landing page needs to be different to what you're using elsewhere. And to some extent, that's going to be because of the intent that people have when they come from a Google Ad campaign versus elsewhere. So let's say you're running a search uh, campaign on Google, people have a lot more buyer's intent than they do, for example, if you're running meta ads and people are being interrupted as they're scrolling through their feed and then they're coming through to your landing page. So if you're using the same landing page, people are at different stages of the buying journey, that's probably not ideal. We're going to want something with Google that's potentially simpler, more to the point, allows people to get to the next step that they're already looking for, they're already looking to acquire into your services, they're already looking to purchase a product. Whereas if you're using more interruption advertising with meta ads or even other networks within Google advertising, you might need to do more warming up, put in more proof, include a video sales letter to help emphasize the benefits associated with your product or service. Like you're gonna to have to do more selling on that landing page. So breaking that out into a separate landing page and for Google ads will be something I look to do. One of the things I often talk about and that I like doing is having multiple different landing pages for our Google ads broken down into various ad groups. So if you've got an ad group that's covering a certain phrasing around one of our services that people often search for so that we can make the language on the landing page really congruent with the language in our ads. So we have that specificity running through. So from the search to the ad to the landing page, it all feels very much like, okay, this is exactly what I'm looking for, for your potential customer. So we will often do that and break that out. Yes, it's more time, it's more effort, but can absolutely help um, improve conversions. That'd be something I'd look to do on top of creating a specific landing page for your Google Ads. You could have multiple landing pages where you really um, break things down. And if you want more information on landing pages, I've created another video that goes into a lot of detail on how to optimize your landing page and get the best results possible when you're running Google Ads traffic to it. Again, there'll be a link in the description, so go ahead and check that out if you want more info on that. And if you think that that might be an issue, definitely something to look at. Something that Google advertisers often overlook because they assume it's the ads. Everyone always wants to think it's the ads, partly because that's an easier fix. Um, than creating a whole new landing page often, but often that is not necessarily um, the case, okay? The other thing I would look at is campaign types, right? So if historically you've run search ads, which is where most Google advertisers begin and where I'd recommend most new Google advertisers start, there's a lot of search intent, usually relatively easy to convert. But let's say, for example, you've run a search campaign, it did convert quite well, but conversions are really dropped off, you're not seeing the results that you're used to, that might be a really good time to try other campaign types and try and take advantage of the other options that Google has when it comes to advertising. The easiest way to do that is going to be with a performance max campaign. And if you've already got some conversion data, you know, your Google ads might not be converting very well now, which might be why you decided to watch the video, but perhaps they were, they were converting really well earlier on. 
Google has that conversion data. They know what a conversion looks like. They know the type of people. They know how many impressions on average. They have data that they can use. So if then you use a performance max campaign, which effectively encompasses all of Google's various networks. So within a performance max campaign, your ads can run on the search network, but they can run on display various places around and the internet. They can run within Gmail. They can run on YouTube. They can run all over the place when it comes to, to running Google ads. You can have Google shopping ads. You can have all sorts, right? That is taking advantage of what Google has to offer. You're using Google's very smart AI to try and get you the best results possible. And for brand new Google ad accounts, brand new Google advertisers, I don't like using Performance Max. But like I said, if you've already run search campaigns in the past, you've already got conversions, but perhaps things aren't going as well as they used to, now would be a really good time to experiment with Performance Max. And just like previously, I'm linking to other videos to try and make this one as useful as possible. I've got a link in the description showing you exactly how to create a Performance Max campaign. It's a full tutorial walkthrough. So if you're interested in doing that, you think that might be the cause, like, yeah, I did used to get great results with search. Now they have dropped off then go ahead and click on that and check that out. I think you're going to find that very helpful. So we've been through a bit of a diagnostic process to try and work out what the problem is with your Google Ads and fix it so you can get a whole bunch more conversions, assuming, of course, that the problem is your Google Ads. It isn't always, as, as we've already discussed. And there are, of course, other things that you can look at and can go through, but I didn't want to include too much. I didn't want this to be overwhelming. There's already plenty there to be getting on with. And I wanted to quickly talk about where I would start. If you've been through this, you're thinking, I think I've got multiple issues with my Google Ads, which can sometimes happen, particularly if you're relatively new to Google Ads. In that scenario, I'd recommend starting with ad copy. Ad copy is often relatively quick and easy to improve and can make a really big difference to your results. Like we discussed earlier, if you take your click-through rate from 4% to 10%, that's going to make a huge difference to the amount of people coming through to your landing page, to your website, and therefore the number of people converting. Actually, in this video, I show you exactly how to write really high quality Google ad copy that can convert really well. I'll go through some of my favorite techniques. I show some uh, examples in lots of different industries that you can model from. So if you think that your Google ad copy isn't quite as good as it could be, go ahead and check this out.